So the next thing I'm going to do is, you know, keep kind of building more and more towards this kind of map. You can see here I focused on Shenzhen. So the first thing you might want to do with your data is actually select a certain subset of data and then export that to a new data set. It's great to have all the points in, in the PRD, but you know, if I only want to work on Shenzhen, I don't need these other points. So the next thing I'll do is actually select and export just the points that are within Shenzhen's boundaries. And you can do this manually. I can, if I have this layer selected in my layer panel, I can just start selecting points. This would probably be good enough for Shenzhen. If you have something really complicated, you can actually use another shapefile to select points with the shapefile. All right, and there's a tool for that. But first, I need a shapefile that basically has the outlines of Shenzhen. I included that in the demo files here. There's a Shenzhen boundary poly layer. I'm just going to drop that in. See here, this is all the Shenzhen's districts. And in the layer panel, I can reorder these. So this will sit below my points. So the points show up. And now I can use um, a tool in QGIS to use this shape layer to select the points that are within it. Okay? And the tool here is called uh, Spatial Query. So if you go up to your menu bar, there's a lot of settings here. For processing data, for doing manipulations, there's these two uh, parts of the uh, menu, okay? And we'll talk more about this next week. For now, we're, all of our data is going to be vector. Vector is basically scale-independent feature data. Any shape file is always a vector file. Um, raster, you can also work with rasters for other types of processing that we're going to do next week. Those are basically image files. And image files can be georeferenced just like vector um, files, but this week we're just going to stick with vector. So all the tools you need to do Processing on vector files, you'll find here. It's a lot of good stuff. Um, and we're going to start to use a few of these things to build that map. I would encourage you to look through all these, and then you can Google them to see what they do. I'm just going to do like a collection of five or so tools to help us build the map I showed. Okay, so the first tool we're going to use is in vector spatial query. OK, you might have to get it or turn it on. There should be, so like I said, QJS, when you install it, it will have a bare bones kind of set of features. For a lot of these other ones, you want to, you just need to turn on the plugin. So let's look quickly if you can find the manage plugins. There's plugins which you have to download. There's plugins which are installed but not turned on. You just want to make sure to turn on. If you go to spatial query, there it is, right? And there should be like a little tick mark or check mark next to it to turn it on. And there's a lot, of, like next week we're going to do heat maps and different raster based tools. Uh, those have to be turned on as plugins as well. Okay, so uh, you'll go to spatial query. So if you bring that up, just like ArcGIS, any tool will pop up a little interface that lets you select the parameters or how you want that tool to run. And once you select everything, you hit apply, and it will run through that uh, and then give you the result. Okay, so with this tool, um, the source features from will be our points. So that's the, the features from which we want to select specific features. So here's a roll down of all our layers, and I'm going to select SoFun points. And I'm going to say where the feature, and you have different options here about how the reference works. And what I want to set, because I have points and shapes, I want to select those points that are within any of those Shenzhen shapes. And the reference is how uh, the geometry that it looks at for that within. And this will be our Shenzhen boundary poly. And use this result to create a new selection. I think that should that's the only option. And I hit apply. This will take a while to process, because it's basically crunching all 105 points, figuring out which ones are within the file. It'll typically get to a certain percentage, and it's looking like pretty good, and then it'll just stall off for a long time. Don't, uh, don't worry. It's going to finish eventually. But before you run any tool, you should always save your map. Okay. Again, the features are just referenced, but the map keeps all the information about the order of the features and the visualization. So all this information about color, you will lose. It's not stored in the shapefile. It's just stored in the map. Okay, so if you don't save the map, you can lose all that. All right, so the tool ran, and it selected all these points. So now this is a selection. 
right? It's just like if I selected them here. And while those are selected, I can export just those points by right-clicking on my points layer. And this is not just not just with that tool, this is for any selection. That tool just got us the selection we want. And you do save selection as. Okay. And this will bring up the same interface that we used before. Uh, so we specify the format, keep that shapefile. Here, I'm gonna make a new name. So because you're always, anytime you process something, you're making new shapefiles. Uh, a good naming convention that I've been using is anytime you do any processing, it's gonna ask you to have a new name. And I'll just use the same name, but then underscore and add whatever process I did. And that creates this nice record in your file system of all the steps, right? Because you're never overwriting anything, you're just kind of doing the next version. So here, I'll s my original one was called Sofan Points, and I'll say Sofan Points underscore uh, Shenzhen or something, right? Something that's meaningful about what the processing is, so you can always find those layers or those shapefiles later, okay? So that's my name. Keep the same coordinate reference system as before. And I'm going to add that saved file to the map automatically. If I hit OK, um, it will export those points. You just exit out of that. And see, it's added them to our map. And it brought them in. You can see it doesn't have that same style anymore, right? Because all it is is those points. If we want to give them the same style, we have to redo that same process. But in this case, I don't really care about the number of bedrooms. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of this um, main data set. Okay? And now I have just the points for Shenzhen. That's the first level of things you can do is you can actually just export pieces.